building a legacy isn't just about people remembering who you were. Legacy is not a tangible thing. You build a legacy through work ethic, mindset, and positive emotions that continue to make championships possible. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing the Chief Executive Officer of the Main Event Entertainment Group Limited, Solomon Sharp. This is Wealth Unlocked. Oh, no problem. I know you've done many yeah, interviews before. But not still nervous. People know Sala, the party promoter. They know Solomon Sharp, the CEO of Main Event and the chairman of SVL Racing and Entertainment. Is there anything that people don't know about you? Well, a lot of people don't know Sala, the baller. Um, started very young from in prep school. The first time Wilmers won the Alberga Cup. I was the Wilmers Prep? Yeah. Yes, yes. I was the baby on the team. Um, I remember the year before, um, they pushed me down and they said, you know, come back next year, you're too small. Um, when I went back the next year, I was, I, again, I was a baby on the team. But um, I made the bigger boys feel it. Football is a big part of my life. I went to Campion, I, you know, played sports, I balanced football with the academics. Um, but I wasn't a nerd in school by any means. Um, you know, I had fun. So I kind of tell people that uh, I really stayed in school so I could play football, you know. I, 16, 17, when I went away after doing upper fifth at Campion, um, I started um, university at 17. In my life, I had to almost, always you know, go against the odds. Um, when I went to university again, they had never been to the national championships. Um, I'll never forget it. We were two matches away. I missed a penalty in the penalty shootout and um, I had nightmares for two weeks, oh boy. Um, but by the time the, the next year came, I sent for a couple more Jamaicans, we went to the national championships. So two of my four years, I went to national championships. Nice. And um, so even from then, from, this, from the class teams, from the, from the Colts teams, from the university teams, I was a, somewhat of a builder. So with that said, um, I got my first job at Deno and Geddes. I think that's my first and my only job. Um, I started in the PR department, um, knew nothing about journalism. And most times the, the PR person is kind of like trained, a trained journalist. I had to do newsletters and magazines, plant tours, you name it. I was there to do everything and anything. And I think um, those things along my, my, in my career mm -hmm. helped to build and mold who I am today. So football is an integral part. That's where I get that competitive spirit from, that, that edge to always want to win. Um, when is it, when it is, in, is very important, but sometimes it's how you participate and to ensure that you have the right team to win. You lose, you have to pick up the pieces and you have to keep going. And that's what I brought um, to, the bro to the boardroom. And um, you know, just kept going, going, going. Um, in the boardroom, you, you mess around with structures mm -hmm. on the play field, you mess around with formations. It's, it's all the same thing. You've had to deal with playing four days in a row. You've had to deal with working four days in a row, almost not sleeping. Mm -hmm. So I think my whole sporting career and my initial career at Deno and is really pre prepared me for all my um, entrepreneurial dreams and passions. So. Here it is that, you know, it went from Salah the baller to Salah the hustler mm -hmm. to, I guess it's, I'm now more refined, so I'm now Salah the businessman or Salah the entrepreneur. But um, at the end of the day, Salah really just keeps it simple. It's the eye on the prize. It's the win. I go back to the marketing concept, you know, identify the consumer's wants and needs, satisfy these consumer's wants and needs, and do so at a profit. I don't believe in that you, you can keep doing the same thing every day yeah. and um, you know, be satisfied if you're not satisfied with the result. So if you're not satisfied with the result, what do you need to do? You know, what bold decisions do you need to make? And um, I think I've had to you know, make some big ones along the way and um, go in some places where, where nobody has gone before.
You spoke about having to make big decisions along the way when you're ready, switching it up, restructuring. So you started main event in 2004, right? Correct. Right. At that time, what were your plans and dreams for the business? Were your ideas for the brand and the company at that time what they are today? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it grows bigger than. Um, you set out to do something big. People try to tell me that I'm good, but I think I'm still a little lucky. And um, sometimes it happens in six months. So it actually moves on a lot faster. Main event to some persons are big right now, but I'm not even 50% along the way. Um, we should be having bigger stages. Um, you know, we built out a, a, a vision, you know, to be the region's number one brand in delivering, in delivering phenomenal experiences. And how do you do that? You need a, a whole heap of resources to be able to do that. But you can't have um, big dreams without structure, without support, without partnership. So that's, those are the elements that are integral in the execution. So I'm happy that you mentioned structure and execution because you know, they say a goal without a plan is just a wish. So it's one thing to have the big dreams and the big goals. Then the next thing is you need to put a plan in place. But on top of that all, and most importantly, is you actually need to execute on the plan. So what would you say is that key differentiator between coming up with the vision, but actually executing on the vision? So it's important to set that plan. But I've never been one to get, um, to get held back by the plan. So a lot of times, you know, you know, people use these pretty words you know, of curating the plan and this the plan and it's all of the plan and the plan and the plan, but you know, you have to be able to execute. So exactly. most times I'm even executing before the plan is finished. I have to be constantly prepared for the unexpected. So in football, sometimes we know who we're playing. Mm -hmm. So we set a formation to neutralize the opponent. Um, there's a big opponent that just came for two years, you know, COVID. It's gonna, I'm going to touch on that, but continue. Yeah, but there was no plan for that. But, but then we realized how resilient the business is. And then you have to put the business before you all the time. So you sat there in prison in COVID and it's like, wow, the, the business is healthy. You know, the business has a good cash flow. Um, but the persons that depend on the business are not feeling so good. I, I think it may have been 2019, there was an article I was reading um, about you. And in the article you mentioned you wanting main event to be a $3 billion business, right? And of course, this would have been before COVID. So then COVID hit. I'm sure you've had some setbacks along the, along the way. But how did you pivot? You know, that was the, the key word during COVID. How did you pivot? How did you keep the business relevant and, and keep your eyes still on track for that $3 billion? So again, we have to go back to football, eh? It's a COVID hit. You feel like you're down four love half time. What do you do? Do you, do you, um, you know, go back in the dressing room and say you're not coming back out because you have lost and this is all what you've been playing for and you're on a high. And, you know, we're, we're coming out of the, the, the best first quarter ever mm -hmm. and everything is going to go through the roof. Um, so this is where you, you, you button down, you go back to the coach, you go back to the board of directors, you take all the advice from the chairman um, or f now acting chairman and the chair of the finance committee was Stella and he's like, the key thing that you, you're doing a, in a crisis like this is manage your cash. So we button down to understand what was going on. So you don't just you don't change your formation now and start to go in attack because you think you have lost or you're losing. So you, 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 stay, you stay in containment mode. Um, and we have come out of two years with a you know, healthy cash balance. And you try not to do too much outside of core. So wherever the opportunities came for core, you did it. So it's almost like it was half time, but, but then the ref never blew the whistle to come back out. And, is the ref went to blow the whistle for us to come back out and it, it, it just never happened. So it felt like just being locked down in a preseason. So what do you do? You know, you just get fit. Given my 
my approach that was you know properly signed off by my partners on the board of directors you know we built up a rich a, a really rich um, asset base mm -hmm. things about anywhere from six to six hundred million to eight hundred million dollars so you don't just leave that in a warehouse and decide that you're not um, going to do anything eh? so you looked for the opportunities you utilize the um, the asset base where you could um, you kept the bills you, um, you know you kept paying the bills doing what you could um, luckily for us we had built in a component from day one um, in digital signage so again it goes back to building that team that has the right set of defenders the midfielders the attackers um, you have to have a good goalie there's a good um, coach and a good um, squad on the bench so it was really tough but um, you know we're alive and you still have your eye on the prize we still have our eyes on the prize and um, but you have had two years to do a lot of thinking so while you're moving sometimes you don't do as much thinking right even though you're constantly revisiting and so having had a lot of time to think and studied the business and realizing how much stronger the business was than we realized mm -hmm. the price is now bigger how hard was it during these past two years to keep your team motivated so you spoke about what you had to do to keep yourself you know motivated eye on the prize you know, making the, the, the prize even bigger, but how difficult was it to keep your team motivated and in line with you and bought into the, still bought into the vision? Yeah, so it's really tough. I've never played a game like this before, and personally, I think I failed. Um, it wouldn't be the first time I failed in life, um, but we have to pick up the pieces. We'll apologize, we'll make it up along the way. And I think if we make the thing bigger and better and create more opportunities for everybody, um, I may be forgiven one day. Um, it will go down in, as a little blip in everybody's mm -hmm. lives and careers. And I never brought it here, I never caused it, but I still take some responsibility for what I could have done, but you know. And that's what leaders do, right? Yeah, hindsight is twenty twenty. so I'm a hard judge on myself. So somebody else would be like, oh no, you, you're forget it, you know, what's in the past is in the past, but yes, I agree. But we're going to pick up the pieces and we're going to move forward. And as I said, you know, the, the prize is bigger. And sometimes if you, if you create a better result, sometimes people tend to forget. I'm pretty sure that you didn't have this type of success without some form of financial planning. And I know you say you're not usually focused on the, the plan, but how important do you think it is to have a roadmap to financial success for your business? You have to be what you're good at. So as good at turning over the revenue. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so while you're doing that, you go and find the support for the finances. So, you know, I would have you know, gone to my investment bank of friends and they, they would have said that there's going to be a stock exchange and you need to go on a stock exchange with the numbers that I hear you're already turning over and that you want to turn over in the future. And um, so I wouldn't say that because I'm not a finance person and I don't plan, I, I don't get caught up with a plan, but financial plan was was a key part of it. So, and what we did, we kept reinvesting in the business, mm -hmm. right? So as soon as we found ourselves with a tranche of cash, we didn't cash out. We kept putting it back. So at the beginning of COVID, you're like, are you gonna last? Mm -hmm. At the end of COVID, we felt like we did the right thing because the resources are there for us to flick the switch and start over or, or to resume. Yeah, when do you cash in, um, how you capitalize? And for cash in for me, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna stuff the pocket in my money. Cash in for me is like, you know, put this m money somewhere. Um, is it more equipment? Um, is it that big facility that I want to build that, you know, we'll speak about off the air. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, I'm good at what I'm good at, right? And I allow others to be good at what they're good at. So 
this is where good financial persons like yourself come in and be a big part of the equation and help even create a bigger vision to say, hey, you have a lot more than, than you realize. And if you move this from here to there, um, this is going to happen. So it's important. So, it's, it's, so the partnership is not just the partners that you have in your own boardroom. Mm -hmm. It's your financial partners, it's your suppliers, it's the employees. It's everybody. It's, in, it's the total ecosystem, the environment, what's going on and when. So you touched on partnerships. Uh, and earlier too, you touched on, on mentorship. So for you, especially given the industry that you're in, I want you to tell me how important is that partnership, that collaboration, networking? How important is it to building, building your brand value? Um, so I'm big on brand building. So I, not, I don't just work for my clients to help them to build their brands. Because I have to help them to build healthy brands mm -hmm. so they can afford to support my business. Um, but whilst I'm supporting their business, I'm also building some serious brand equity in all of um, our brands. So there is the main event brand, which is first and foremost to me. But there was a time when there was a Solomon Sharp brand that was ahead of the main event brand. Mm -hmm. So I had to tap into all my um, brand equity, all my partnerships, all my networking. Was it my football networking? Was it my horse racing networking? So at one time, I was O.C.'s son. Now he's Salah's father, <laughs> right? So when did I, at, at what point did that change? Mm -hmm. The brand building is, is even more key for me. I wish I had the metrics every day to measure it. I wish I could put it on the balance sheet. Um, I think if I could put it on the balance sheet, the brand equity, the, the brand would be three times um, the value. And that's very important, you know, to, to, to build that authenticity in the brand, mm -hmm. build the authenticity in Salo, um, and keep showing up every day and um, as Salo, as Solomon Sharp, as main event, and all the other... Um, um, businesses that I'm affiliated with and um, keep turning it over because if the brand fails then the financials come to nothing mm -hmm. so it's, it's key that you you build a, a strong brand um, a resilient brand um, you know for the future what made you decide to list and I asked within the context of there are a lot of entrepreneurs who are hesitant to list because of the increased public scrutiny, the, 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 the pressure to perform. I mean, it's one thing when you have one or two investors that you have to be accountable to. It's another thing when you have thousands of investors that are depending on you for a return on their investment and value creation. So there is that added pressure, there is that public scrutiny, that increased transparency, but what made you decide to list main event and how do you feel about that decision five years later? Yeah, so we're accustomed to pressure, you know. You, you're playing from prep school to high school, there's always an audience there. You get brought up in front of the assembly to say, um, you know, the boys are going to go and play, wish them well. You look out in the audience, you see the whole school that's depending on you. You're building tradi um, school tradition, you're building a brand within the school. And um, we just know that in order to unlock some value and brand equity, we had to go this route. Um, capital wasn't readily available, and um, it was one way to to move. So it was it wasn't even enough capital, mm -hmm. but it was enough to unlock some value, and then you were also brand building at the same time. Right. So it created you, opportunities oh to yeah. get more capital. Yeah. So to be honest with you, I've learned that listing was even more of a marketing exercise than it was even a financial exercise you have to prove yourself to get into the big leagues and this is the big leagues so if you want to be amongst the big boys you have to do what big boys do and you have to just keep that structure and we've really unlocked um, unlock some value and um, there's a whole host more to go let's talk about Salah the family man how do you balance and may not be a balance but how do you juggle family with all of these other hats that you wear? Well, I'm not so sure that, um, you know, I'm 
you'd write a book about me being the best father, but I work on it. Um, and when everything, it just takes a lot of work. Actually, COVID gave me an opportunity to reconnect with my family, um, especially my young children, and um, to get them to get to know them better. Um, just today, I had a swim meet with my daughter, and um, I can see that competitiveness in her. Um, she didn't win the individual event, but she won the relays. And that for me was more important than her even winning the individual event. The team aspect, I guess. Yeah. So she didn't win the individual event, so she has something to work towards. Mm -hmm. Told her she did well. And we're going to have a conversation about how she did well within the team. And ah. how important mm -hmm. it is for her to do well within the team. You know, because that's one of the most important things that I have learned that I'm going to have to share. Um, I've had conversations with my twins and I've said, hey, why are you guys fighting over that? You shared your mommy's tummy for nine months, right? Or thereabouts. So were you fighting then? So come on, you know, and how they are going to, and then, but you see the natural partnerships that are formed when they want to gang up on me. Mm -hmm. um, so I've learned a lot in the break, so it wasn't all bad. Yeah, so no, it has made me, you know, want to work harder for them, work harder for the shareholders, work harder for the brand, for the businesses to, to, to be bigger and, and, and better and, you know, long-term sustainable. Solo, so I'm gonna wrap up with one last question. Um, for that next young woman or that young man who has this big dream, this big idea, but they don't have the courage to take that next step. What advice do you have to them? You have to find the courage. Failure is a part of the process. So, and I've learned that in the last two years. Um, you know, you felt like you were failing. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I, I, you know, I grade myself hard. I felt like I failed my team. Um, maybe COVID, maybe I was failing my, my kids before, so COVID kind of got me more mm -hmm. focused. So, you, you just have to keep working at it. As I said, I'm going to have a conversation with my daughter. You came forth today in your individual events or event, um, but you won in a team event. So you're going to have to do some work on your freestyle. If she swims for Jamaica in the Olympics, fine. But if she doesn't, this is a character building moment mm -hmm. for her. So you just have to you know, continue to build on your character um, continue to build that, that strength, that inner strength. And you just have to keep moving because um, it's not going to come to you. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen, happen at the snap of a finger. Um, you, have to, you have to create the result. So, so deliberate action creates a result. I never said it created a positive result, mm -hmm. but it creates a result. That result, you then take an analysis of it. You learn from right? it. Right? Yeah. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it indifferent? Right? Is it halfway? Did it get you three quarter way there? So you're constantly, as you said, learning from it and building on it. And um, you know, you might you might say, you know what, you're starting back from scratch. Or you might say, you know what, you're almost there. So either way, it takes that courage, it, it, it takes real character, it takes strength, it takes resilience to just keep going. So for me in business, you know, somebody says, so, so what is the end game? It will never end. It's just continuity. Sola, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. I've known you for a number of years, but I think this is actually the longest conversation we've ever had. For sure. So it was great to learn a lot more about you than what I knew already. Um, imparting your wisdom, your gems along the way. I know our clients and future clients can learn a lot from what you've said. Um, and looking forward to greater things from main events. And NCB Capital Markets is here to help you on that continued journey.